Hey gang, I am Joe Uttleman, and thank you for joining me for another live episode of The Last Frame. You know the drill. If you're here or if you tune in during the show, please leave a little comment in the chat. Let me know you're here. Let me know you're, where you're watching from. I got Lynn here from New York, Victor in Rhode Island. Uh, let's see, the Boudoir Studios here from Thursday in Australia, as is Paul Sutton in Perth, Australia. And Paul, I got a bone to pick with you, man. I hear you've been stirring up trouble with those two dudes down under and talking about my article on Petapixel. I heard them mention that you shared that article. But seriously, uh, next time you get to talk to them, say hi to Glenn and say hi to Bruce. I know that they're uh, kind of thinning things out a little bit with the frequency of Shutters Inc., but it's a great podcast, two awesome guys. Tell them that I said hi. Tell Glenn... Think of something nasty for me to tell Glenn. But anyway, I appreciate your uh, spreading the word down there. All right. Dylan Cooley, great to see you guys. So, listen, if you are watching the replay, that's okay. Leave a comment below the video. Let me know that you're here. Let me know where you're watching from. And for all of you, please help me get this show out to other photographers. Spread the wealth. Click that share button and that like button down. Yeah, that side. We'll go that way. There we go. Down there. All right. That like button gets YouTube to show the video to more people. And the share button, of course, always helps let people know. Facebook, Twitter, they're the fastest way to go ahead and get the word out. And look, if you're a member of a photography club, a Facebook group, a meetup group, spread the word. Let people know about these image breakdowns that we're doing. I've been getting a great response. So, this week, we're going to talk about easy steps to style fashion portraits. So, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully, you know, hopefully you checked it out. I did a series of two B&H event space presentations that were all about creative portraiture, these crazy fashion portrait things that I do. And I kind of touched on this topic in that, but clearly I didn't go into enough detail because over the course of the last few weeks since I did that presentation, I have had a few people reach out to me and like, how? I don't understand how to start. Like I talked in the presentation about going to fabric stores and where I kind of source some of this from. So uh, the links for both of those presentations, part one and part two, they're in the description below the video. Check them out if you haven't already. A lot of details, like two hours worth of presentation, okay? But what I didn't get into a whole lot is number one, kind of what do you look for in terms of when you're in a fabric store or when you're shopping? What are you looking forward to say, hey, that's going to make a good piece for one of these shots? Because here's the trick, gang. So many of these pictures that you've seen me post that you may think, oh, that's an interesting outfit that the girl's wearing. They're not outfits. In fact, more often than not, they are not outfits. So I'll give you I'll give you an example or a couple examples here. I'm gonna switch my screen over and I just pulled up a few shots. So pretty much every one of these shots, as I go through here just really quick, we're gonna we're gonna take a little bit more of an in-depth look in a minute. But if I go through here really quick, none of these are outfits, so to speak. In fact, the overwhelming majority of them, not 100%, in fact, there's one where the girl's wearing a turtleneck underneath if you look close, right? But the overwhelming majority of these, what the model is wearing is a tube top, which is, you know, just basically a tube that covers the important stuff, leaves the shoulders bare. From there, I'm adding material or vinyl or plastic or feathers or boas, and we're draping them and shaping them and we're creating something interesting. So the number one question, where do you start with this, Joe? So those of you that have followed me long enough, you probably know what my go-to answer here is gonna be. You don't read a book, you don't read a blog, you sure as hell don't read or watch a YouTube video to do it. You just pick up some stuff and you start experimenting. It's the only way, guys, I, I, I swear to you. Like, you know, if you're maybe, you know, talented enough and maybe you're pursuing a career in fashion design, well, then sure, in your classes, you're going to learn a lot all about color theory. You're going to learn a lot about materials and textures and how material shapes. And that stuff's great. I don't know any of those things. 
And I'm not that uber talented. I'm really not. But I am willing to fail. I'm willing to experiment. I'm willing to practice. And I put in the time to practice. In fact, I just got off the phone 20 minutes ago with a young model that I am going to spend three hours with this Friday. She reached out to me online and said, I would love to model for you. Cool. She's cute. I think I might be able to do some interesting stuff with her. But I said, well, you know what? Before I bring a makeup artist in and spend money on a makeup artist, because that costs money, let's just get together and see what we can create, see what we can come up with. So she's going to bring a couple things to my studio on Friday. I'm going to spend three hours. And I was completely straightforward with her. Don't expect any pictures. What you can expect is if you come in and you give me really good energy, I will definitely schedule a time. We'll bring a makeup artist in and we'll do something really creative like that stuff on my website that made you reach out to me in the first place. But Friday, we're just going to play. We're going to experiment with things. We're going to take a lot of crappy pictures, but those crappy pictures will become kind of the foundation, the spark behind some other pictures that we might do later. Fortunately, she was all in. So that's the plan. So I'm taking three hours out of my week and it's been a bit of a crazy week. So I'm looking forward to having three hours in the studio to play. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And so already what I've done is I've given myself permission to not impress her. I've given myself permission to take a piece of material and just wrap it around her and see what it looks like. And literally there will be a lot of wrap something and literally kind of stand back and stare at it so that I can formulate an opinion. Now, normally, obviously, if we were doing a shoot, like a real shoot, you know full well, I'd be the first to tell you, don't, don't do this. Don't do the stand back and stare thing. There is no better way than to make your model like nervous and uncomfortable. But I've created a situation where the subject knows that's the plan. I know that's the plan. I've been very straightforward with it. So I have bought myself permission to fail, to experiment, to try things, to see what happens, and basically to get some new ideas. So you learn and you start by doing. But what I want to do is I want to break down some of my shots, some of which I'm sure that you folks have seen before. Some of them are some older shots that you may never have seen before. Uh, older, and when I say older, I'm talking even as much as 15 years older, some of these shots, okay? But I want to kind of go through the shot element by element and show you what's really in the picture so that you're also kind of learning to look at images like this and not just images that I do, but that, you know, images that other photographers do in this similar vein to realize that even sometimes when it's a full length picture, and I, I didn't pull any of my full length images. I probably should have, I'm sorry, but I have full length images that look like these incredible, amazing fashion outfits. And literally we've just wrapped stretchy material and tool around the model to create this kind of fancy, you know, ball gown type vibe, right? So it's just a matter of being willing to experiment. So let's go through a couple of these first. And then also, I want to show you some close-ups of some of the materials and textures to help you kind of get a better sense. Because it's one thing to see them in a picture. It's another thing to kind of see them in person and see them up close and, and get a feel for, for what they look like. And I've got another camera set up so I can show you close-ups of them, okay? So a shot like this, you know, what makes this picture is a pretty girl, nice makeup. There's nothing particular, and don't get me wrong, I'm not dissing the makeup artist, but there's nothing like, oh, crazy or particularly all over the top creative here, but it's a really interesting hairstyle where we added in uh, the little bit of garland. It's green garland from Christmas time is what's in there. And the material is just purple tool. You can find tool in a fabric store. You can find tool in a craft store. If you go to a craft store, go to the wedding section and they will have rolls and rolls and rolls of tool, okay? Um, and it's stiff enough that you can shape it really, really easy. So literally all we did here is we took this big hunk of tool and just kind of wrapped it around the girl's shoulders and then took a few clips in the back to shape it and then took the front of it because it, it looked like kind of almost half a collar when we were done and just took the front of it and had her put her hands under it. Instead of doing the obvious thing, putting the hands over top, put the hands underneath. 
okay? This image actually, here, let me see if I can uh, tell you here. Yeah, so that, that image is, is um, actually 10 years old, right? So that's, that one goes back quite a ways, okay? Similarly, this shot here, model is wearing a tube top again, okay? That's it. So she's got a, a simple tube top on that crops off here. This is yellow vinyl. You can get yellow vinyl at a fabric store. You'll find it in the upholstery section. And you don't need tons and tons and tons of this stuff. Like usually what I will buy when I'm, when I'm buying materials, I'm usually going to buy three or four yards and it will depend upon the cost of the material. So one of my other rules for buying material, unless it's a paid job and I need that material specifically for a paid job. As an example, this yellow material I didn't have. This was a paid shoot. This is a shoot that I did for Stella Pro recently to introduce the reflex lights. So I paid full price for that material because I was up against a deadline and that was the material that I wanted. It was the color that I wanted. But otherwise, all the stuff that I buy, I buy it on clearance, right? I never pay full price for it. I buy it on clearance. So you can, you know, when, when this stuff's on clearance or when they're remnants, like ends of rolls, you can get two, three, four yards for a couple of bucks a yard. It's really cheap, right? So similarly, this is a shot that I did actually for Stella Pro, but this was recently. This was uh, the end of July down in North Carolina. This is three pieces of material that I literally took one of them, draped it over myself and the model. That's the blue one, which is actually black. But um, anytime you have black in an image, there's blue in it. So if you pull that saturation up on the blue and there's no other blue, you can get the black to turn blue. So that's a Photoshop thing with hues, right? Um, the gold material that you see, I just draped over her head first. The black material is draped around her shoulders and the collar is actually an African collar that I got on Amazon. And I'll show you guys how I find a lot of this stuff on Amazon in a minute. So this is, oops, here, let me switch that. Here's the, the collar. In fact, let me go back to full frame there. So it snaps in the back, okay? Um, even then, it's actually a little bit big for most people's necks. So, you know, you're gonna adjust it a little bit once you have it on. It's cheap, it's inexpensive. I paid less than 10 bucks for this. And I'll probably get two, maybe three images out of this. And when I say two, maybe three images, I mean images that don't make it really obvious that I've reused the same thing. So as an example, I could do an image that doesn't have a lot of yellow in it, and I could go ahead and isolate this yellow and use hues and turn it into different colors. So, you know, I'll find different ways to go ahead and kind of repurpose that, essentially. Uh, but once I get two or three in, I'm done with it. Like, that's it, I, I'll move on. And I actually have a couple of young women in the area that are into cosplay and they do all kind of craft sewing and they love to make costumes. So, and, and they've also modeled for me. So every so often when I'm ready to kind of do a, a purge, I'll give them a call. They come over, they rifle through, they take what they want. And then I go out and I start collecting some more stuff, right? So all of these shots, I am investing a couple of bucks into these shots in terms of, you know, materials, or sometimes it is actual outfits, maybe like a shirt, or something like that that I'm gonna buy, but I buy them cheap, always cheap, okay? So some others here, we'll go through really quick. Uh, this one, so that's an umbrella for the background, but the, the material that's wrapped around her also clearance at a fabric store. It's this white material that is um, textured with, I'm not, they're not feathers, but you know, almost these little leaves that are kind of sewn onto it, right? So, and it's literally in that shot, it is just draped over her shoulders. That's it, right? It's draped over her shoulders. And then I have a person standing on camera left and a person standing on camera right because we did this in a trade show booth down in North Carolina. Either side of her standing just out of frame, holding the ends of the material out to create kind of the tent shape. And that's it. So one piece of material. Uh, underneath, she's actually wearing a tube top, okay? Uh, when I travel and I do my presentations, I actually travel with tube tops. I buy them on Amazon for about three bucks a piece. And because nine times out of 10, by the time the event's over, either the girl forgets to give it back to me or I forget to ask for it. 
or whatever. And so, yeah, for three bucks a piece, I just buy new ones, okay? Um, similarly, this is just a piece of material that's draped over her head, that's all. It's just draped over her head and it didn't look right rounded to me. So I just kind of grabbed the material and made a peek out of it, boom. And then the adjustment was how far forward do I want it with her face? Do I need to move it back? Do I need to move it forward? In hindsight, many of you hear me talk about looking at your work and saying, okay, if I could do it again, what would I do different? This picture is a perfect example for me. The material is too close to her eye right here. I know it wouldn't bother a lot of people. It may not bother you and that's okay. This isn't about right or wrong, but if I had the opportunity to go back and do this again, I like to have space around the eyes. You guys should know my photography is all about the eyes. Always it's about the eyes. So for me, that's just, it's a little too close to the eyes. I would love to see it pushed back a little more. I like the straight line. I like that I've kind of got the angles, but it should be back a little bit more. My taste, okay? Um, similarly, a shot like this. This is just also from a fabric store. You find this kind of stuff in the trim section. Every fabric store in the trim section, you can buy this stuff by rolls where you're, you're paying for it just like you pay for material by the foot or by the yard. And by the way, you'll notice in most fabric stores, the pricing is by the yard. You can, you can walk up to the counter and buy a foot of something. So for trim, if you're, gonna, if you're thinking, well, I wanna use it like as a choker and put it around the person's neck, um, you, you generally don't need like even a full yard because nobody's neck is, is that wide. So like this is an example of, you know, a piece of trim, just, you know, thin lace. Now I happen to get two feet of it. So I've got, but it was cheap. I think this was like 49 cents uh, a yard. So it's crazy cheap, but this is a type of thing you know, it's straight up on the top and then it's got the scallop bottom. You can make a choker out of it really easy. And then you're just gonna clamp on the back to hold it in place. It's, you don't have to sew it. You don't have to do, you know, any crazy arts and crafts. But I, you know, I have stuff like that. I have um, stuff like, you can see it in the bag, kind of this gold material. So I'll go through the fabric stores and I'll go through the trim sections. And in every trim section, they also have a clearance section remnants, ends of rolls, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you just spend a couple minutes and you go through that stuff and you understand that sometimes you're gonna go and you know, it's, it's, it's like for those of you that maybe do garage sales and flea markets, right? Some, sometimes you have good hauls, sometimes you don't. So, but you make it a point to, to go on a regular basis. During the pandemic, I obviously didn't go at all, but now I've been starting to go kind of at least like once a month just to see what's there and I'm starting to pick up some new pieces, which is great. So, you know, similarly, just to go through a bunch of these, this is a case where we actually used hair extensions as, you know, as, as the collar, not so much material. Um, this here, I thought I had it here. Oh, there it is. So, you know, this was actually something I found in um, a five and under store. Uh, a couple of years ago, it, it's got like little mitts on the end so a person can wear it like as a scarf and tuck their hands in it kind of thing. But it's just long enough, you wrap it around. I got this on clearance for like $3, right? And by the way, especially for you guys that are listening, if you have a significant other, okay, train them to look for this stuff. Since, you know, they probably go shopping in clothing stores more than you do, have them look for these things. My wife is great at finding me stuff like this. She'll go into stores. I'll get a text message with a picture. It's like, any use for this? It's $2, that type of thing. And I'm like, yes, get it. Or yeah, no, nah, that's that's not gonna work for me, okay? Uh, the sunglasses, also from Amazon. Super, super cheap, right? So, um, you know, this one, just red tool, similar to that purple picture, red tool, and I've got a fan blowing it around. This one, a piece of material that we cut and wrapped around the model's head and some tool that is, she is literally just, her hands are underneath it in the front. You can't see her hands, but she's holding the material together, done. And then it's just a matter of pulling on it and shaping it. So you see, most of these ideas, gang, you just, you just grab some material and, and you experiment with it. You, you play with it and have an opinion. Here's one of the mistakes, the rookie mistakes that people make when they start doing this stuff is they, will 
go to the trouble, with, and this is why it kind of becomes self-defeating and maybe depressing for some people, right? They'll go out to a store, they'll find something and think, hey, this would be a great idea. They come back, and then when they get in front of the camera, okay, oh, I'm sorry, guys, you can't see the image. My apologies, my bad. I got too many screens going tonight. So here's the ones where she, she just has her hands uh, underneath it, okay? So super simple. She's actually holding it. The material on her head is also just a, a piece of remnant material from um, a fabric store. So, and, you know, literally once it's wrapped around, you, you guys should be able to see the image now. Give me a piece of feedback. Let me know, okay? Um, once, once you've got the material, like, wrapped around, it's just a matter of tugging and pulling on bits and kind of reshaping it and getting something that looks interesting. But one of the kind of self-defeating things that happens with a lot of people that I watch try these for the first time, they'll go to the trouble of collecting some material, maybe even getting a makeup artist, which by the way, gang, makeup artist really makes a difference in these kind of situations. And what happens is they wrap the stuff around and it's like, oh, that's really cool. Like I've got a model and I've got a makeup artist and I wrap it around. And then they just start shooting and they're done. They're finished. You have to take the time to really look at the material when you're doing these kinds of things and get a sense of, you know, does it work? Like this, this is literally just red cellophane, a $1 roll of red cellophane from a dollar store. And then the, the top that you're seeing. So again, the model's wearing a tube top, right? Bare shoulders. So this set is pink, but in the case of the picture, it was red. This is that new kind of, fancy package wrap stuff you find in um, the arts and craft stores. Honestly, I don't quite get it for wrapping, but a lot of people will tie this stuff, they'll cut it and, and make bows out of it for Christmas. So we just basically took this, wrapped it around the shoulders underneath the material to create the V-neck. I don't have enough of it here to crisscross, but yeah, to create the V-neck. And then the red cellophane is on top and literally the model is holding it right out of frame right right underneath the bottom even the cellophane is like wrapped around and underneath her fingers okay and the wig that she's wearing is an inexpensive cosplay wig that i bought on amazon the sunglasses also red cosplay sunglasses for like four dollars on amazon okay so um when you go into stores like you know five and under and those kind of stores always check their clearance sections too, because they'll have like these wigs, they'll have the glasses, they'll have that kind of crazy stuff. Um, if you still have one of the Halloween stores in your area, and if they haven't closed yet for the season, they'll have some things on clearance. Now this year in particular, because of all the supply chain issues and all the shipping problems, there wasn't near as much clearance from Halloween as there has been in the past. And you know, you have to imagine it through. Don't just buy stuff to buy stuff. When I buy something in a store, there's always something that I'm imagining doing with it. That may not be where I end up with it, but I'm not just going to say, oh, that's any color, buy it. Never. Because otherwise, you can find yourself buying a lot of clearance stuff, and no matter how it goes, if you use it, it just looks like junk, right? So obviously I'm using all these materials in ways that they don't really look like what they are, but I'm imagining something that I could do that would be kind of interesting with it. So that's always the key for me is like, I've got to have at least some idea when I pick it up. It may not be how I wind up using it, but I want to make sure that I can actually see it somehow in my mind, in an image, because that says to me, okay, that will work. Brian, in this particular case, it's a black seamless paper background with a, uh, this was with a speed light, a speed light with a red gel on it to put a red glow. And then I just did a real simple composite overlay when I was all done processing the image with the red bokeh. The red bokeh is a stock image that I was able to purchase for like $5. That's it. Okay. Um, that composite, or to do a composite overlay like that to texture your backgrounds, Super, super simple. You can find tons of tutorials uh, to do that online or December 13th. So that's a Monday, Monday, December 13th, 5 p.m. I'm going to be doing a, another presentation for B&H Event Space. 
that is all about digital makeup. And so even though it's about applying makeup to the face after the fact in Photoshop, some cool stuff. I've been having a lot of fun with this. But one of the things I will show in that presentation is doing this overlay background to add some texture or some depth or, or even for that matter, or, or a different location to the background. Cause that's kind of part of the process that I do frequently when I do the digital makeup shots. So um, if you're still interested in that, remember December 13th, I'll be sharing the links out on all my social. So make sure you follow me on social and that way you, you won't miss them. Okay. So, but you know, every single one of these, this one uh, is just, um, you know, a simple tube top that this one cost me a couple more than three bucks because it's got the sparkle, but I was able to, you know, find that, uh, online, Amazon, et cetera. But all of these, like, here's one where I found this relatively sheer material with this like animal print to it. So this one, I actually bought six yards because it was really cheap when I got it. And I used part of it as a background and part of it, it's the same material behind her as it is in front of her. So there's no, there's no compositing here. This is a shot. In fact, this picture was actually shot as a JPEG. So that, that's the image out of the camera, done. This was years ago. This was actually taken in, let's see, 2005, okay? Um, so like that, that is the image, right? Um, I have a speed light on the ground, lighting a gray wall that's behind that material. That's what kind of gives it that transparent feel and you see the light at the bottom. And then we just literally wrapped it around her head. So there's nothing like super fancy or super tricky to it. Uh, if you look close, the material that's wrapped there, so I found this hat cheap. The material that's wrapped around her neck that looks like it's some kind of fancy top, it's felt. That's all it is. It's, it's felt that you can get in a craft store or again, really cheap. But notice when we're doing this, again, I'm working with a makeup artist. Okay, so obviously for this picture, the color's yellow, right? So we've got yellow and peach in the makeup. We've got yellow in the eyes. We're tying the whole thing together. That's another rookie mistake that photographers will make when they start playing with all this material stuff is, you know, they wrap this stuff around, but then the makeup and the hair and kind of like nothing else matches. So please do notice when you see these images, a big part of what's going on is the details. Everything is immaculate. Everything looks like it's meant to be the way that it is. So everything about this shot is basically fake. It's some faux fur. Uh, this is a big, uh, about three yard section, literally it's the whole thing of this shiny material that we wrapped around and wrapped around and wrapped around and then kind of poofed it out, right? Another reason for working with a makeup artist is indeed that you get a second set of eyes. It's also really helpful when you're doing wraps and that like this, like I did that wrap, but it's really helpful to have help when you're trying to hold things in place and get everything set up. So it's one of those things you just have to dive in and experiment with and play with, right? So next week, and I saw there's one or two questions. I want to go back and get to them before I run out of time. Next week, I'm going to do a part two on this topic. And I'll get a little bit further into kind of, you know, some of the tricks that I've learned for making the material kind of do what you want it to do. I'll get a lot more specific with you next week. Instead of giving me the overview, what kind of materials to look for? Because I told you I would give you some input on when you walk into that fabric store, what materials are going to work best and why. So I'll show you that next week. Uh, and then since I'm about to run out of time, let me switch over to my browser here really quick. What I'll also get into next week is how I find the stuff on Amazon. And so like you'll notice because I shop for this kind of stuff all the time. So this is my Amazon homepage. If I scroll down, look at, look at these items that Amazon's showing me. Now Amazon searches for me, right? So these are all things that you can buy on Amazon. They're collars and really cool bodices and things like that. Some of these are gonna be like $40, $50. So you better have an amazing picture in mind. Others are gonna be literally like eight or $9, right? So that's the cool part of this stuff, right? Is, you know, if you are patient and if you make it habit and keep looking, you can find this stuff really, really inexpensively. So believe me, you know, I may see something on Amazon, like one of those collars that was there, I've never seen before and it kind of looks cool to me. I, I haven't clicked yet, but I'm confident when I do, it's probably going to be about $30. No way that I will buy that now, but I will add it to um, a wish list. It's a private wish list, but I'll add it to a wish list and keep an eye on it. 
and see if the price comes down because with that kind of stuff, it frequently does, right? Greg, on Amazon, you can search for all kinds of things. I search for fashion sunglasses, and these are the words, fashion sunglasses, fashion collars, uh, feathers fashion. Um, so here, actually, let us uh, let me switch back really quick. Of course, I'm going to go over by a couple minutes, but there. So actually, by the way, I was wrong. I told you I thought it was going to be out $30. It's only $10, so I may have to buy that, right? But uh, I could do a, a shot for um, fashion collars. And, and you know, we could add women in that. So some of it, of course, is cats. So we don't want cats, dogs, no. So we want women, right? And, you know, now we're getting like little interesting pieces like with dickies and things like that. Some of it's shirts. Here's some interesting stuff that could be turned into it. Oh, here we get into some interesting lacy stuff down here, right? Um, so if we do feather collars, yeah, we can do feather collar women here you have all these really cool and you've seen some of these in my pictures right so you know if you've been paying attention i've done shots you know with this kind of stuff and then what happens is when you get into these things here's the other trick with amazon so let's say that you think this one is interesting and you click on it and by the way don't don't spend 40 dollars on one unless you have an amazing image right because it's not like you're going to use it 10 times and if you do use it 10 times you're just copying yourself right so okay you can use it more than once, but you got to find ways to make it look completely different. But here's the thing. Notice on a lot of these. So you get into here. If I click over, look, they have other options from the same company. So I might be able to get ideas there. And once you've done a couple of these searches, scroll down to the bottom. Because once you get down to the bottom, like way down to the bottom. And by the way, you can get a lot of cool ideas from some of them. Not all the pages have this. But once you get way down to the bottom, they'll start showing you other options even show you gloves and accessories and bracelets that you can add to it, right? Um, go down even further yet, past all the reviews, and it's still loading. And so, yeah, I'm not getting anything useful today. But a lot of times under Explore More Items, they'll give you stuff that's, that's also useful there. And you could do the same. You could do um, fashion sunglasses, okay? Um, and, and you'll find just, you know, like interesting different things and you look for the cheap stuff. Obviously you don't want to spend $400 for a creative image. You're going to look for something that's really cheap. I have like tons of pairs of sunglasses and that, that I spent, whoops, there it is, a couple bucks on, right? On Amazon. And I play with that stuff routinely. So, so hopefully that kind of gets your thought process going. Next week, again, next week, I'll give you my tips on like what kind of textures, what kind of materials, what to look for, what to avoid. Uh, I'll give you kind of all the, um, all the mistakes that I've made and, and the things you, you know, want to make sure that you're not doing. Okay. Uh, I did see a question up here. Alvin, really quick, I'll answer this one for you. Uh, since the model contacted me, is she paying you? Or are you paying her money for images? Uh, neither, Alvin. Um, she did contact me. I, she has a very interesting look. So I'm interested in photographing her. This is literally, I, I put my cards on the table and said, Hey, here we are. This is what I'm willing to do. I've got some things that I want to experiment with. You have a very interesting face, but since I've never photographed you before, I would want to be able to kind of do a test shot before I spend the money to bring a makeup artist in and do something like that. So how do you feel about doing this? And she was ecstatic, like awesome. I mean, she's she's really anxious for the idea to be able to get, you know, an image at some point that's got all the crazy makeup, one of my beauty shots, right? So uh, this is an opportunity for her to have a little bit of fun, learn a little bit, and the payoff is we come back and we do one of the cool images. And it's an opportunity for me also, one, to get to know her a little bit so that I have a better sense of what I can get out of her emotionally and in terms of expressions and things like that. It also gives me the opportunity to actually photograph her. So I will come away from Friday knowing what camera angles look best, things that I do and don't want to do with regards to lighting, uh, expressions, that kind of stuff. Uh, this young lady that I'm talking about, which I'll make sure that I share stuff with you guys. She also has a background in dance. So I'm very interested in being able to maybe do some motion and some more animated type things with her. Anytime you have an opportunity to work with a dancer gang, don't turn your back on that because dancers have much more body control, much more elegance. They can do a lot of cool things. Uh, this girl 
um, has some ballet background, which means she's also going to be very good with hands and elegant movement. So yes, it's um, th that's why I'm doing it. But there's there's no money uh, exchanging hands. She's local to me. She's not going to have to drive far. She's not going to have to pay to park. Uh, she's doing her own simple makeup. So um, yeah, I will make sure that she comes out of the day with one or two pictures a day. She will think are so cool that she can put them on social media. Um, will I come out of the day with something that I would share on my social media? Probably not, but that's not my goal. Like that's absolutely not my goal. But certainly for her time and effort, I'll make sure that she comes out with something that she's gonna be like, oh my God, this is really cool. I wanna put it on social media. And then it's, it's a win for everybody. So I promise I'll revisit this particular shoot with this young lady and then my follow-up shoot with all of you so you can kind of see the from the other side, once I get through it, what the progression is and, and how I came up with ideas. I promise I will share all that with you since we talked about it tonight, okay? All right, so we're at 36 minutes. So I'm over time. Um, these shorter ones, I gotta talk fast and I'm gonna break it up. So some of these topics will be a couple weeks, but I like it for two reasons. One, not gonna lie, I get to go watch a TV show. But two, hopefully, I can motivate you guys to go pick up your cameras. Please don't spend so much time on YouTube. Please get out there and take pictures simply because your best shot, it's your next shot, gang. Adios. Have a great week. Stay safe. Take care.